Real-time strategy is one of the only game genres that really belongs to the PC. While first-person shooters benefit greatly from the precision of a mouse, they're also perfectly playable with a controller. No, the only genre that absolutely requires the precision of a mouse and the plethora of hotkeys afforded by a keyboard is the venerable RTS. Yes, yes, I'm aware that we've had a few real-time strategy games on various consoles and handheld platforms, ranging from pretty decent efforts like the Halo Wars games to ballistically terrible ideas like StarCraft or Age of Empires on the N64. But I think anyone who has actually played an RTS on both the console and PC will agree with me here. RTS belongs on the PC. Real-time strategy also holds a rather special place in my heart, considering Age of Empires really was my first love in gaming. I've followed the genre with great interest ever since, starting with Command and & Conquer and Warcraft, from the Age of Empires clones to the StarCraft clones, past the Total Warfare franchise, and into the reinvention of the genre by stuff like Dawn of War and Company of Heroes. Of everything in the entire genre, the only games that can really claim to be worldwide blockbusters are probably Warcraft and StarCraft, but despite the genre never really getting all that much attention, there has never been a shortage of new and interesting RTS games to play. Enter Northgard, another take on the age-old question of how well could you handle being a monarch, really, that alters the question to specifically wonder whether you could manage to pull off leading a clan of Vikings. This is a hybrid of the more chronologically realistic games like Company of Heroes, where in-game time is measured in hours, and the grand epics like Empire Earth, where in-game time is measured in centuries. Northgard will task you with bringing about the success of a tribe of Norsemen across the span of a decade or so, depending on how many opponents you have and how committed you are to turtling. To be clear, I'm very committed to turtling. Always have been. I blame the Babylonians from the original AoE. I've been dropping plenty of barely disguised hints at my own extensive history in RTS as a genre, with the intent of building my ethos regarding these first impressions of Northgard. Some of you are undoubtedly wondering whether I'm actually going to get around to sharing those impressions instead of waxing eloquent on the history of a genre barely anyone cares about, dang it. And to you I say, alright, alright, calm down. Simply put, I like Northgard as an entry to the genre of real-time strategy. It's not oversimplified, but it is relatively simple when compared with the depth of games like Age of Kings or the precision balancing of games like StarCraft II. I appreciate the unit AI that auto-tasks your little villagers, and I appreciate the obviousness of the resource stack. Your people need food to survive. The more people there are, the more food you need to bring in. Your buildings need wood to be built. Better get a few people cutting wood. You need some specialists like healers, explorers, and warriors. You're going to have to pay those folks a little extra. It's all very logical and easy to grasp. Exploring to annex new territory also steps up your resource and personnel requirements predictably, without programmatically enforced technology gates like the Ages and Age of Empires, while simultaneously preventing newcomers from getting dumpstered their first time out by the equivalent of a zergling rush. Tying the rate at which new people are added to your settlement to the overall morale of your people has a similar effect. In essence, APMs, or actions per minute for the uninitiated, don't matter much in this game. You've executed your build order perfectly, eh? Well, that sucks, because it's winter, and everyone in town is demoralized because you didn't gather enough food, and now nobody is moving into your settlement, so you can't colonize new territory or build your army. It's a nice blend of city building, where population happiness is key to your success, and traditional RTS strategies where simply covering the map with your flag is the fastest route to victory. It's well thought through, friendly, and mostly forgiving of mistakes. And the slower pace of the game gives you more time to pause and appreciate how good the thing looks. They've built up an excellent engine here, and I hope they see enough success with it to justify the creation of a franchise built around other civilizations. I'd love to see their take on, say, a Central African RTS of a similar vein. If I had one criticism, it would be that the cap on the number of buildings you can have in a given territory is too low, but I recognize that was probably deliberate, and probably put there exactly to force people like me out of their comfort zones. That cap has the effect of requiring you to explore and branch out in order to continue building everything that you need to be successful, and renders turtling largely ineffective, at least in the traditional sense. So that's just my complaint. People who aren't compulsive turtlers probably won't care. And the game doesn't feel like it's punishing me for wanting to hole up where I started and build all the defenses. It's just sort of nudging me away from that effort like a slightly exasperated parent. So what are my first impressions of Northgard? Largely positive. If you like RTS, and in particular if you're looking for a slightly more relaxed RTS experience, this game is polished and very satisfying to play. If you've never tried an RTS, this is a good place to get into the basics. It's not going to teach you everything about the game, but it'll show you the stuff that matters in a friendly way, and you'll probably have a pretty good idea after you play a few games whether RTS is a genre you'd like to invest more time into. I mean, it's reminded me why I love these games so much.